So I have a T111 siding in the house now. Not going to put any uh, insulation down over it because then you have to build up the trim. It's not necessary. I found a lot of good sources out there to tell you how to tie back on new construction, but I never saw anything for replacement if you're going over T111 siding, which I am. What I found was that you really want to you know, end the tie back a half inch away from everything from the top so that you can tape it. Uh, you do tape the light fixtures. You have to, you should lap it. So you put a small piece here, then these on top, then these on top. The building inspector said vinyl siding leaks like crazy. So you you really want to make sure that you, of course you do your bottom first and then lap it with the top and overlap. You know, that's easy to find that 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 uh, advice. You don't tape the bottom. The bottom of the uh, of the building does not get taped. Okay, so I'm trying to draw a level line for the starter strip. You can stretch chalk line on these nails that I've put in the corners. Uh, snap it and how do you know the nails that you have are exactly right and the only thing that I found that really worked good was this uh, laser level and this happens to be the Bosch GL L2-10 or whatever. No matter where it sits it shoots the same consistent line and 28 feet across on this house I'm getting a different reading from the laser level and chalk line droops about 5 16 inch at its lowest point. They always say to start siding from the lowest point of your house and move up and I tried to follow that but it doesn't quite work with my house because it looks a lot better if you can just use this starter strip and have your, your panels kind of free at the bottom instead of having that J channel cover it up. Because when I get to the top of this uh, deck here, and I'm going to have to use J channel all along the bottom there. I had to, I, I started in the front at the higher point, went around the entire front of using that starter strip, and I'll connect some of the walls with the J channel, like the front wall at the bottom where you have the, the entry door and the garage door and there's not really a lot of siding there anyway. But the panels will line up as you cross over from one to the, to the next. Um, the, I'm going to cheat a little bit and they won't match up at this front corner where nobody ever sees it. And everyone sees the back so you, you want your, your corner pieces here. I'll show you these. Uh, needs to, to line up with uh, your panel spacing. They'll line up here at the back where you see it all the time. It'll line up on this side. But once you get down to that wall there, it won't line up on this wall, but it will line up in the front where everyone sees it. And that's how I can kind of cheat and allow starter strip on both the front and the back. I, I wanted to replace both the roof and the siding this summer. I think with all of the J channel and stuff that's going up against the roof, you do, you have to do the roof first. So I think normally, um, you would do your soffit and fascia first before you do your siding if you were to do that and in this case I did not because number one I really just wasn't sure of the trim color uh, I'd love to do forest green but there's a house down the road that has forest green and I wanted to just see how it all looks with white first there's a skirt board underneath all the soffit which will make it easy to uh, apply F channel if in the future you know I do want to add soffit underneath these uh, eaves here but I think um, 
you know, I'm going for the rustic look. Having, uh, you know, some kind of official soffit under there was a low priority for my particular house. You know, I, I just didn't want anything that hinted modern. I ordered 23 square in total. There's about 13 boxes that have already been installed. All the materials uh, cost about 11 grand. I have no idea what the, the labor would have cost. What do I think about the mastic panel? Uh, it's, uh, it's it's great. It's uh, it's everything I hoped it would be. It's it's a lot thicker than normal siding. It seems to be going up fast. I'm getting faster at putting it in. Uh, quality seems to be fine. I found that a lot of the uh, directions provided by the manufacturer or, or whatever source was out there on the internet really didn't talk about um, a lot of the what ifs you know, you're gonna come across a ton of stuff like uh, you know your cable wire what do you do one of the things that I, I was uh, kind of curious about is that whenever you go under a window under an object uh, under the eaves up here along the top of the wall you know if you, you've got Jane channel covering that but you cut off the nailing fin so how do you attach your, your siding and if you look at any other vinyl siding product out there they use a utility trim and then a snap block punch that snaps it up in there you can't do that with this this is very thick stuff the contractor that did my dad's house up north just used uh, nails with a, an extension to hold the nail and go up under and, and it would just nail without the nailing slot. Now I've done it a little different because I want to be extra careful. I've just taken a drill and drilled a nail slot and then instead of using a nail that's hidden I'll just I'll just use a drill. It's an exterior primed screw. I, I think the maybe uh, Mastic is keeping it out of the instructions because if it does uh, buckle, they're, they're, now they're not liable because they didn't say to do that. So that's, I, I, I can complain about that, but um, there really should be like a punch that allows you to, to punch a nailing fin into these areas that are cut. And there's probably a tool out there for that, but I, I, there was never any mention of it in the directions. Uh, which would, would have been nice. A lot of things missing from the directions. Um, you know, how to handle special cases is the biggest thing. You know, when you, you hit certain types of obstacles, you're going, you have to go backwards at some point, like this wall right here. You know, you're starting at the lowest point, but at some point, you can't go right to left anymore. You gotta go left to right. It's things like that. That's, that's really what's missing from the directions. What if scenarios? I'm probably averaging about one square a day. I can easily do one square in an hour if it's a low straight area like this area right here. But you know, when you get up towards the top, you get these peaks, um, you get all these obstacles, it can really add a lot of time. This little piece right here took me about three hours. It goes under under the uh, eave there by about 64 inches or so. The way I did it was I, I cut out the hole for this and then made a seam back here and just kind of slipped it around it. Split this, the, uh, the panels up so that one meets here and the other one meets there. And I'm measuring from the bottom here instead of from the top here because this is always going to be 20 inches below the top which is a great shortcut and so from here to here is three inches from here to here is nine inches adding the quarter inch of gapping and what i do is i'll just measure from the top down and when i hit that 20 mark i know to go up three inches from 20 up nine inches from 20. 20 inch Oh. Stay focused on getting these hooked. I, you know, when I first, on my first wall, I went back and looked at what I did, and I caught a couple that I missed. I had to undo 
a lot of panels and rehook them. So just make sure you're really paying attention to every panel, make sure every panel is hooked. When I start a new wall, it can take an entire day to put starter strip down, J-channel around all the windows, doors, eaves, and you know, these peaks are no picnic either. And then put all your blocks in as well. I mean, I can easily spend one day on one wall outside corners I'm using some decorative stuff here that needs to be matched up. It's all uh, fairly time consuming. One of the best things that I forgot to do in the beginning and that I'm remembering to do now is to manage my scrap. All this is scrap and I'm just pulling a piece out of here now that uh, can go to use right where I'm using it right there. jigsaw with a PVC blade set on the lowest setting and it cuts really well. Um, you know, if I'm going to make a long cut, I definitely want to use that. It's faster and easier. If I'm going to make a, uh, a cut along the top here, all I do is I just set these uh, one bys on the end of it. You know, draw the line. One time I forgot to set the blade a little lower when you do that. I won't run it directly directly down the uh, the panel. I'll set this these uh, cardboard spacers that come with the uh, boxes uh, in between all the panels there. The best thing that I found to cut the angle of the roof is just to make a uh, template. You just hold this up to whatever you're working on. really speeds up any kind of uh, angle cuts you have to do. I'm using two of these step ladders for board across the, uh, the steps as a scaffold. There are plenty of resources out there that'll tell you how to J-channel a window properly, but with this side line of siding it's a little different. There's, it's the J-channel 7 8 thick, so you can't use that tool that automatically creates that tongue. So I, I talked to some contractors in the area. They don't even use that tool. Um, they just use these uh, snips and just hand cut the, the flap. Um, I'll, I'll make a couple cuts so that it's uh, tapered a little bit and it'll, it'll fit into the groove a little better. Uh, one of the rules I've discovered is that you always have the, the angle on top. So this would be your top right corner. Um, you know, the piece that goes underneath that. Uh, same thing, you would, you would just cut out that hole with these snips and run it up underneath. What do you do when you're running J-channel along the roof and these 10 foot 6 inch pieces don't reach? How do you butt them together properly so that they can expand and, and contract? When these are up against the wall, this slides in here about an inch and you leave a quarter inch so that it can still expand and contract. Notice that once I got it under there, I had to extend it all the way left, pull it down so that it kind of breaks through this, catch the lip so now that it's it's tight. Now remember I said uh, managing scrap is kind of important. And whenever you start a new wall, or in this case the door is so high it almost is like a new wall. I can use scrap. The scrap is usually 
where the right side's cut off, but you still have a lot of stuff sitting here. So I kind of made these all 45, 38, 45, 38. You always want to keep that pattern on the wall. Okay, just cut this piece here. Sure to get it hooked. Got it hooked there. That quarter inch gap over here. Got a nice quarter inch going around the box. In a lot of places here, I don't know what I would do without this laser level. Um, on this side of the patio door, the line is just above the nail fin right there. I put a little shade over it. I can see that it's right about here. I mean, it's like 5 16 inch lower over here than there. Used a Sickens natural color stain on that deck. 